All flavor is an earthy, musty flavor that winds up in the fillets of salmon or other species that are harvested from wrasse. It's derived from very specific bacteria that then create these compounds in RAS. And the, the primary compounds that are of concern are geosmin and 2-methylisoborneal. These are the, the compounds that create that earthy, musty flavor in, in fish flesh. And obviously these are flavors that consumers do not prefer. All flavor is common. The bacteria that produce all flavor are just found in soils. So essentially these bacteria are everywhere. And this is just not a problem for RAS produced fish. You know, really this is also in the drinking water industry and other food production and beverage industries. So it's not a new issue, it's not just a RAS issue, but it is something that we need to uh, be aware of uh, in the industry and have solutions for. In the history of RAS, we've always used an external process to eliminate all flavor before fish go to market. And that process is called depuration. And with that separate finishing process, fish have to be removed from RAS, moved into a separate system, so they have to be handled, and there's some labor involved in that. And in that separate system, it's much different than a typical RAS. So we're exchanging a lot more water. We're operating those systems more so as a, a flow through or partial reuse type system. And by doing that, you have to obviously have water resources to support that process. So that's kind of contrary to the idea of RAS where we're conserving our water resources. So generally what a facility would do to kind of mitigate that water use challenge is to actually then reuse that water back into their primary RAS as their supply water for that system. So it's essentially their makeup water. Uh, so that's one approach. Uh, other facilities might have a different approach where they release their depuration system water because Essentially, it has less nutrients and organics and solids in it. Now, at the Freshwater Institute, we recently carried out a study to characterize the water chemistry and waste production. And it's interesting because there still is some waste contribution of the fish to that depuration system water that you have to consider. So there's a little bit of suspended solids that are still remaining in that water. And the fish are constantly producing ammonia, which was interesting. So when those fish are not fed, they're relying on actually resources that they have in their body. So that would be protein resources that would turn into excreted ammonia, and they're probably also using some of their fat resources. So those metrics are important to understand from an engineering design perspective, if you're going to reuse that water, or from a discharge perspective, because some states, especially in the US, have very stringent water discharge requirements. So it, it works, but it has disadvantages in that you need to use more water to flush across the fish so they can release all flavor. So there's a water requirement. There's a separate infrastructure requirement to have extra systems to move these fish into. And obviously there's a labor requirement. The fish can also lose weight in those systems while they're kept all feed. So really the angle I think that we're now trying to take through SAS squared is to mitigate or remediate eliminate all flavor in the primary RAS, uh, which is kind of a new way to look at this that we haven't really approached before. But really this would be the, the holy grail, so to speak, to find a solution to eliminate it so we don't have to worry about it at all or have a, a separate process. Under the all flavor remediation objective, we have two sub objectives. The first is biological mechanism. So with that, we're really trying to understand the microbiome or the specific bacteria that are present in our RAS. So we're looking for uh, the bacteria that are producing all flavor, but we're also very interested in the holistic microbiome or the whole community of bacteria uh, in terms of the, there could be bacteria in the system that are antagonistic or uh, bacteria that actually consume all flavor. So we're really trying to characterize this microbiome and to understand how it might differ across various facilities and look for common denominators that might be present, whether that be a certain water chemistry parameter, uh, whether it be fresh water versus saline water, hard water versus soft water. Kind of look at maybe a recipe is a good way to look at it. What recipe do we need to make sure that we eliminate or reduce all flavor in RAS? And then the, the second sub-objective is uh, looking at technologies and advanced oxidation and applying these uh, technologies within the RAS water 
to uh, eliminate all flavor or to destroy it. And then we also have plans to combine certain technologies, whether it be with something like hydrogen peroxide or with ozone, which we know can oxidize organic compounds. Uh, we're also uh, going to work with specific industry partners uh, to evaluate all flavor at their facilities and to look at their microbiomes uh, by sampling water or biofilm from their systems. And then also if they're willing to look at, is there something in common between all these different locations in terms of water chemistry or system design that we can begin to flesh out, you know, that recipe that I mentioned uh, that is required to maintain low off flavor. Well, this is one of the most important questions that we get from stakeholders. It, it's near the top of the list of challenges, I think, uh, in RAS, and it's why we're so focused on it.